Hello, it's Jesse here and we're going to start working on this Triumph again and this this time here we're going to be putting a primary system together, primary chain system together. Um, so we'll start off by assembling, putting the group together with the, the front sprocket and the clutch hub and slide it in as a group because you feel like, cause the chain is continuous and there's no links to separate it that we're going to be doing. So we got to put it on as a set and then we go from there. So. Stay tuned here. It's going to be pretty interesting, so hope you enjoy this. Okay, so here we go. We got primary system for a 650 Triumph. So 750s, they went to three row chains. This is a 650, so it's got a two row chain. Um, when we first got the bike, somebody had, um, it was all messed up. I'll just say that. <laughs> they had a three row chain in there. They had sprockets that were just two row. Um, no, they had a three row here. Oh, they did have a three row clutch? And they had this oh. two row up front okay. with a three row chain. Yeah, so we got all the right stuff back in it later when we when we saw that. And now we're going to be putting it back together here finally for to get this bike going. So, anyway. So to do this as a set, we're going to, of course, put the the front gear in, the front sprocket in, of course, and then we're going to be setting up this other stuff here, like the hub, and then the, the copper washer there, thrust washer. Okay, that goes in first. This That rides on this, like this. Okay, then, then we got to put all them bearings in there. So they're all individual loose rollers. Yes. So we've done this kind of stuff before with the UH motor and this one's a little bit worse because this does not have a, a bearing holder like the motors do. No. So they all, you gotta like get them right in the right groove. So we'll plug away at this and when we come back we'll have this all knocked out. So. With the tweezers. Yeah, got a few there going, so. Alright, well, stay tuned here. Alright, so we got our 20 individual rollers in there all set up. Ready to go. Spins nice. And then we'll be hooking the chain up to this here relatively quick here. So all the parts we got here, we got the chain of course, front sprocket, rear sprocket with, with the clutch basket, discs of course, the outer pressure plate, part of the alternator, which is the um, actual magnetic pickup, and then the dampener. So this dampener was actually in pretty good shape. Uh, I got like a video of doing the 79 Bonneville where we completely fixed a restored a dampener because it was all... So the rubbers were all rotten and rotten away or whatever. So you can look for that one. And then, yeah, otherwise this is going to be a kind of the same kind of deal with the way the 750 clutch change that we did. But well, we're restoring this bike, so we're going to do it again. And yeah, it's all exciting stuff. So stay tuned here. All right, so we just pushed the dampener onto the clutch hub here and, and encapsulated those bearings so they can't fall out and stuff. So now it should be able to go in as a setup. Yeah. See? Bearing. Right. The only time this spins is when you push the clutch in. Otherwise it's solid. Right. Okay. And that, that metal noise you heard was probably them bolts just yeah. touching, going around. So. so now we got a key. Gotta put this key in here. Now you gotta be careful when you go to put these in because if you don't have this, if you have this corner up a little too high, what happens when you go to push it in, it'll just do this. 
And I'll just catch and it and push it. And I'll turn it like that, and I'll just push out. Turn it like, oh yeah, up like that. So because uh, they don't go in really like, like super super tight. So I leave the back a little high, and this a little low. So that way, when I go to slide it in here, because see it's it's angled because of this taper, okay. and it'll straighten itself out when we do this. Now we got to put this on. Yeah, we got to put the chain on. Set. Yeah, like I was saying, because we can't like master link this chain. And then the front sprocket, of course. Yeah. Now we got to put this on. As I said, that's at the top. That's splined. Okay. Got in there? Yeah. I've got to have. All right. I'm going to have a big washer here. And this. Clutch up dunt there. so far we're gonna work on getting this tightened down a little bit and then go from there so stay tuned here All right we're gonna put that on there spacer keys already in there so we can take that back out square so one end or the other is going to fit There we go, we got the key in there. Well, it's got to go on a lot further. And this will push it in the rest the, of the way. And then I'm going to take down. it back out.
There we go. We got the the counter uh, the key set now. Gotta put the keeper in it. Right. I, did, I just didn't want to do that all at once. Yeah. Keeper in, locks in there too. Put a little tab on the back side, and then on the, this is used, but it's got a lot of good left in it. Even though it was bent over here, we can bend it in different spots. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, this is the used one. We're going to reuse it. And it's good shape yet. And unlike a typical tab lock wash, this, all, this has a flat piece that comes up along the side. I don't like we'll the other ones. Later. The other ones have like a little piece that hangs out, but this is the whole side comes down. So. I suppose it could do that. I just didn't realize it did. What's going on? Oh. But if you think about it, there's a triangular shaped piece inside of here. That's, right. That you're bolting down solid. The other part's got rubbers all around it to this. So that floats. Right. So I guess it's... We're going to call that normal. Yeah. And these are all kind of like... They're tight. We never lose yeah, them. They're tight, so... Yeah, because like when we were messing with the 79 Bonneville, the, the dampeners that are inside here, the little rubber pieces, they were all like melting away and oozing out. So that's kind of one of the telltale signs if you see a bunch of black rubbery ooze coming out, which this didn't have anything. That's oil. Yeah, that's oil right there. So, all right. Well, stay tuned here. All right, so we're getting ready to torque this down here, and just got done looking up the torque specs. So we're going to be doing the the rotor, which is that part with the magnets on it. That's the fixing nut, rotor fixing nut. That's going to be 30 foot pounds. Mm -hmm. And then the clutch center nut, clutch hub nut, is set for 50. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Stay tuned here. All right, so this is set for 30 foot-pounds, and want to try it? It's tight. I already did it. Okay. There we go, 30. We have the, of course, we don't have the top end done, so we're having this lock and tool here that we did before to keep it from flopping around. So that helped us keeping it steady there. Now we're going to move on to this one here. 50? That's 50, yes. The clutch hub center nut, 50. All right, we'll switch places so that way I can hold that from turning. But before we do that, I'll put some blue Loctite on it. Oh, the Loctite, it makes sense. All right, stay tuned here, we'll get some Loctite. All right, so I just put the lock, blue Loctite on it, and he's running it in. Got a little extra there. I'm running out. <laughs> there we go. And then, yeah, then we'll, we're going to switch places, and then I'll uh, lock the clutch hub from turning while he does it. We don't have a rear wheel on, which is ideal for doing this. Okay. All right, so we got this special tool in here which is locking the, hub, the dampener here to the hub. So when he goes to rotate it, it's going to bind up on it. But it won't damage nothing. Keep this tight here. Let's see if this works. I've seen other people do this, so what the heck, right? <laughs> I 
there we go 50 foot pounds I just checked it so it should be good there we go it's actually designed to, to do these kind of things on uh norton's actually, actually. Norton one. those are norton's but um it's for you can walk for nuts like this yeah i'll do that stay tuned here yeah this tool is actually for going into these these things here so we can lose them and open them. That way you don't put a screwdriver in there and mar it all up and ruin it. <laughs> Which happens a lot because I've seen a lot of a lot of bikes that have them all messed up because they don't use the right kind of tool. So anyway, stay tuned here. We'll go back to the clutch. All right, so we got the all this all together tightened down, and we're about ready to put the clutches in and the clutch disc assembly in. And this is the old clutch disc assembly uh, kind of like this is a notorious one for sticking um, I don't know just the way it is they and what good. and what and they work good but they stick is that what ends up happening is that you can't like take off with the bike because the clutch sticks and then and uh, the what I'm talking about is these two plates here when they engage they just adhere to this metal ring and they don't unlock then you got to like break the clutch free to to uh, get it to rotate, and if you don't do that before you go riding, you're just all wheelie on as soon as you take off. You could blow out a transmission gear. Yeah, or that too. So we're gonna put a new set in, which are a little bit differently. They're a little, made a little bit differently. They're a little bit narrower, but the the cardboard here or the cork, I mean, it's a little bit different material. A lot in like thinner too it looks like yeah it's extra plate That's so we end up getting an extra plate so and then also on top of it we're just going to put new springs in just because so we got a new set of springs the other ones the original ones might be okay they're over there but um otherwise let's go ahead and get started here so for yeah Start with the bonded one here. And then we'll put in a metal. And that one there hooks to the the dampener hub. And then of course the bonded one the it hooks into the actual uh, basket part. Now in a previous segment I made, uh, we, we changed clutch discs in a, in a 79, and you can look for that video, but uh, the main purpose on that one was is the same kind of thing. It was sticking, and it, we had to really adjust it a lot because because uh, actually the, the thing wouldn't engage properly. It was the wrong kind of clutch set, disc set. So we swapped them out for something just like this one. So we're going to put the same stuff in this bike. Because it ended up turning out really well on that bike. And what I mean is about 1970. And then between 70 and 71, they made a change to where um, that. <laughs> the breather. Yeah, the, the, oh, yeah, that's what it was. The breather. So when they did that, it actually the took. Oil holes and, yeah. So what happened is it, it needed to be a dry clutch. And we ended up putting wet clutch in or something like that. And then is that what it was? Well, it was separate. Before it was separate oil, and you could put oil in it that didn't make a clutch. Now you have to use it. It mixes the motor oil with the transmission right. all the time. So with that, you need a wet clutch. And we were running 70 and older style clutch discs, and it wasn't working right with the wet. So, um, yeah, so anyways, it works better now. And we're going to run this, this set here as well. In here and then I got another bike I want to put one of these sets in so down the road but it'll be the same procedures as 79 so we probably won't ever uh, we might not video record that but we'll see <laughs> I'm having troubles with this disc. 
We might have to deburr this disc. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the notches are a little are a little uh, rough. Oh, that sharp edge yeah. from when they yeah. made them? They just don't want to slip in here. All right, let's clean that up then. Well, stay tuned here. All right, so we've been filing on this for a while, and we got some of them to go engage. It looks like we got to file some more, but we want this plate, we want these plates to be able to move in and out. Like over here, it does real easy, but here it's tight, see, so I got to... I gotta do something here. I think it's these. Or see how there's gap there? I think it's too tall or so. I don't know. You have to just file on Probably the, a tie the teeth a little bit more. All right. Stay tuned here. All right. So there we go. We're gonna get this. We got this finally. It fits right in. So this is the new one that came with, and we're gonna put it in the middle there somewhere. Set it one in. Final bonded one, and then. The outer plate it's not like any different than the other plate it's just that this is was has a, a wear mark from where it originally from where was on here. yeah from where the, the plate actually rides, sat on it and rubs rides, on it rides on it don't slide just rubs on it We gotta make sure these little dimples fall into them little slots in the plate uh, dome. Now we're gonna start with new springs, right? Yeah, new springs. You took the old ones away? Yeah. There are special uh, nuts there. And then our special tool to run them in. The actual uh, Triumph Surface tool. It actually fits into those grooves just right and allows us the head of the, the protruding bolt to come out into it. Because the normal screwdriver just doesn't work as well. You can show it. Yeah, here we go. That's a special tool. You can use a screwdriver, but then when you get so far, you have a heck of a time. And you just end up messing the nut up and using the wrong tool anyway. You could use a screwdriver until you reached it flush. Because sometimes this slips off and does that a lot. Until the bolt comes into play. But sometimes you gotta go a little tighter, so then it... You gotta go past. Yeah. You gotta bring that bolt all the way out. And then what we're going to do is we get to where they all are about the same and then just run them in farther equally by counting as he turns them. Mm -hmm. And that way uh, when they run out, it actually is straight. Good starting point. Yeah. All right. Well, stay tuned here. Some more stuff to do here. There's a there's a push rod inside of here, and it's pushing on the clutch 
where the clutch cable goes. Right. So what you're going to do is you're going to you back it out till it's good and loose. Then you bring it up to where, you, where it just stops or you feel it just Touch. took all the play out of the clutch or push rod all the way back to the mechanism. Okay. And you make it snug. Then you back it off one half turn. Tighten up the knot. And then that's it. That puts a little play in the push rod so it isn't riding hard. Right. And it's not pushing on that. Now all the clutches are solid and tight. And yeah. It should be pretty close. Once we get the handlebars on, we can pull the clutch in and we can check for run out and adjust as necessary. Yeah. So we'll right up, now we're done with yeah, this. Yeah, so all we'll end up doing from going forward here, we'll probably put the we'll probably put the timings or the, the alternator. alternator stuff in here, the actual yep. charging S system in. Stated. And then we probably won't put the cover on because we gotta check the run out later. So but uh that's pretty much how you put one of these together though. Well stay tuned here, we'll put the charging system together here and then run the wire through and all that cool stuff and then uh that'll pretty much be the end, so Stay tuned. All right, we're getting ready to run the wires in through here, and there's a little fitting that we got to put in first. Threads it into the, the main body right there. Just to protect the wires from hitting that chain. And an oil leak. An oil with peaks. Yeah. Put this on later. I'll just slide this over, of course. Get my stuff out. Get my stuff out. We must have kinked that one. That one got kinked a little bit when we took it apart, if I remember right. They're pretty soft. They straighten right. Yeah, well, they're really thin, and there's a lot of them, and so they like really. <laughs> <laughs> They're really like move easy, so Jesus. stuff yeah it was fun taking it off too because it, it, fought, it fought you the whole way going off now it's gonna fight you all the way going back together yeah you get this urge of hitting it yeah which you end up doing anyway looks like you gotta hit push the top now Going almost there. This is a new boot. Yeah, we slide that right over top of that Maybe. metal filling fitting. Hopefully, well, it went on hard too. So, there. Leave that a little loose, just like that. So on this uh, on this metal piece right here, the part of the um, the pickup, or actually this is actually the output magnets, and these are the pickups. But anyway, um, 
this has like the timing marks and stuff on it. So we'll end up having to leave that open too as well so we can see where help us time. We could time it a bunch of different ways, but we'll probably we'll see. Well maybe we'll time it this way. But um we'll get into that later. Anyway, stay tuned here. All right, so let me just gotta make sure we check it for clearance and stuff with the with the feeler gauge, and then because we don't want them grinding on the on the stator the whole time it's spinning around, so gotta have clearance there. And as long as it goes all the way around, you're good. I now run. These, I run. I check it with eight thousand. These two bolts here, they come through into the outer primary cover. So they get a nut on the inside, holding it to this part of the the stud. And then the third one over here does as well, but this one doesn't come through. Seems how it's, of course, shorter. So. Alright, well we'll work on tightening the rest of these down, we'll come back and pretty much be it. So stay tuned here. Alright, well this kind of ends the segment here on putting this primary together for now. Um, we got more to do yet on this. We got to put the cable on and stuff that we can check the run out with the plate when we engage it. And uh, we made sure that we had 3 eighths to half inch free play on the chain here. Got this all tightened down and routed through here. So this is pretty much ready to go. So hope you enjoyed all this and stay tuned. We got more stuff coming up. We got we're gonna start putting the rear fender on now, it looks like.